Today, I want to talk to you about good fruit, bad fruit, and no fruit. I'm going to read to you from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' great sermon recorded in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. I'm going to read to you a little passage longer than I usually read on one of these daily devotionals. But let's take a look at this. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 15 and going all the way through verse 20, where Jesus said this, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Now, in the previous section of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus just warned of a path that leads to destruction. Now, with the words, beware of false prophets, he reminded us that there are many who would try to guide us along the broad path that leads to destruction. The first step in combating these false prophets is simply to beware of them. We need to beware because not all who claim to speak for God are true. We need to beware because there is truth and there is falsehood, and the difference between them is important. We need to beware because false prophets never tell us that they're false. We need to beware because many false prophets are convinced that they are true prophets. And we need to beware because the price of following a false prophet is very high. Jesus explained one of the great dangers of false prophets. He said, they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. It's in the nature of these false prophets to deceive and deny their true character. Often they deceive even themselves, believing themselves to be sheep when in fact they are ravenous wolves. Now, wolves are not interested in helping sheep. To say it gently, they are interested in what they can get from the sheep. We could say that the fundamental problem of false prophets are that they are self-interested. That is, self-interest can be expressed by a desire for gain or an easy life, or a desire for prestige, or even the desire to advance one's own ideas and not God's ideas. Then, Jesus gave us one way to know a false prophet. He said, you will know them by their fruits. We can guard ourselves against false prophets by taking heed to their fruits. This means paying attention to several aspects of their life and their ministry. We should pay attention to the manner of living a teacher shows. Do they show righteousness, humility, and faithfulness in the way that they live? We should pay attention to the content of their teaching. Is it true fruit from God's Word? Or is it man-centered, appealing to ears that want to be tickled or amused? We should also pay attention to the effect of their teaching. Are people growing in Jesus, or are they merely being entertained and eventually falling away? This is what Jesus drew attention to when he said, Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. This fruit is the inevitable result of who we are. Eventually, though it may take a time for the harvest to come, the good or bad fruit is evident, revealing what sort of tree that we are. Notice also that Jesus said that the choices are not only to bear good fruit or bad fruit. There's also a third category. It's also bad. He said every tree that does not bear good fruit This means that to not have good fruit is in fact to be wrong. Both the one who bears bad fruit and the one who bears no fruit are judged. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus warned us to judge ourselves first. 
than to look for the speck in the eye of someone else before turning attention to the beam in our neighbor's eye. Therefore, before asking it of anyone else, we should first ask ourselves, do I bear fruit unto God's glory? Jesus brings us to the place of decision. So ask yourself that today. It's a golden rule, but you know what? I'm bankrupt. So as Revelation 3.18 says, let Jesus be your gold and he will help you to live his golden rule. Think about that today.